Good morning from D23. We're still in the hotel room, but we're getting ready to head down right now and go to day two of the expo. Have a little bit better of a game plan today, so should be a little bit less disjointed, hopefully. Friday was apparently the big cosplay day, and today is Saturday, so we might not see as many cosplayers today, but you never know. There might be new people here today. Today is also the only sold out day of the convention, so I think there's gonna be a lot of people there. So let's go down, see what we can see, and go to D23 Expo. I feel like I said I had a plan for the day, and then I got here and I'm like, oh no, I don't really have a plan. I don't know if you guys can see the crowd through that window down there. That's the line to get in. These are all people that have been waiting all hours of the night. And now they're headed over to the expo hall to wait again before the doors open in about 45 minutes. So I ran in right away and went to get in line for Mickey's of Glendale because there are a few shirts in here that I wanted to get. But I think we've got about 45 minutes to an hour's worth of waiting until we can get in. So one thing that I'm going to the bathroom right now, they told, told me I could leave and use the bathroom and they'll hold my spot in line. But one thing that I figured out or one thing that I overheard is that I'm in the merchandise line for Mickey's of Glendale. There's also a pin line for Mickey's of Glendale. That line at 940, the doors opened at nine o'clock. At 940, they shut it down for the day. So that is a nine hour line at 940 just for pins. But those, I don't know if they know what the pins are, like what pins they're in line for, or if they had somebody go in the other day and they saw a preview of it or what, but that is intense right there. So I think we're only doing a shop one time this trip and that's gonna be Mickey's Glendale. I also wanted to get something out of the Disney store, but I don't think we're gonna be able to get into that because the line, I have a friend that showed me a picture of the line, looks really long. So once we get into the shop, I'll show you guys around Mickey's Glendale and then we'll get around the rest of the expo. Two hours later. We made it into Mickey's of Glendale. They got all kinds of stuff over here. Some merch from Hong Kong, celebrating the anniversary of the Mickey Mouse disco album. We have this sweet jacket. And then we've got all kinds of other Mickey Mouse disco stuff. Here's the album that is celebrating its anniversary. And you guys will notice from yesterday's video, during the parade, Mickey and Minnie and all the other characters were wearing their disco outfits. Definitely getting a few of these shirts over here. I like them. This one right here. They are super fun. Here's the full set of the pins. We can get these iridescent Mickey ear hats here. You can get all the new Epcot merch. And this is only available here. Oh, look at this one's like opening day merch. How cool is that? And then this jacket is very fun. It's uh, always hot in Florida. It kind of looks like it's a raincoat. I don't know, that might be a good thing to get. So I asked them and they said they still have this pin set available. It was a limited edition of 200 and you get 14 pins. So there's these 12 and then you get these extra two up here, this one that says Epcot and then the Epcot logo for $200. But these buttons are $10 a piece. Oh, okay. Gotcha. She was saying that the different names of the land. So like we've never seen some of these logos before and they're going to announce them tomorrow. I feel kind of good. It was $240 and I feel like I kind of got a lot of stuff for that. With typical Disney prices, t-shirts were $24.95. And the one hat that I got, I got Jen, that iridescent Epcot hat was $30. Not too bad. I may have been wrong. It seems like some of the cosplayers are back today. You guys look fantastic. Now that we are all done with our shopping, let's get to expoing. This is an area that we haven't been into yet. This is called the Emporium, where various people who are not actual Disney cast members, oh, this is the end of the line right here. Disney cast members or employees are selling their goods. Like somebody who collects pins could sell their pins over here, or Disney artists, people that make Disney art. Well, there's a whole bunch of Jasmines here in different Jasmine outfits. It's Doctor Strange and Bo Peep and her sheep. And there's Powerline over there. And then we've got a whole bunch of Kingdom Hearts characters here. Wow, you guys look fantastic. Is he a Kingdom Hearts Powerline too? Oh no. So here's the Pixar booth. They've got a full-size car from Onward. That's their van right there. There's a photo op with the Toy Story 4 characters. 
Oh, what tapes are they listening to? Rise to Valhalla and Quest Mix. I like this. Smells like a dirty old van too. This is an interesting display. This is how they came up with the character Forky, and you can kind of see this is the one that turned out being Forky's character. But all they did was they handed out a bunch of supplies to all of the employees at Pixar, and they all came up with these different Forky renditions. And you can see some of them look like characters from other Pixar films. And then I like how there's a knife in there too. That's pretty neat though. Oh look, there's Sully and Mike Wazowski. So here's my plan. I came to the far left corner of the expo. So way, you can see the entire hall all the way down there. And we're gonna kind of go through the different booths. So this is Disney Fine Art, where you can buy different arts. Like this is Arcee, who was out front. He's doing this exact mural in large size spray paint. So lots and lots of Disney art. Kind of feels like Festival of the Arts. And there are some artists here. Like there's Tim Rogerson right there in the hat. He would sign your art if you buy something. And that way you can have a signed piece. There's an Otterbox booth and there seems to be a real long line of people. I think they're here to have somebody sketch their face and then you can put it on the back of an Otterbox case. Otterbox has these limited edition villains cases that are only available here at D23. These are pretty awesome looking, very 80s feel to them. The next booth is called the Good Smile Company and it looks like they make little figurines. They're like fully posable. These are really interesting. I've never seen anything like this. I've seen the big ones, like that one of Deadpool right there, but I've never seen these little ones. Look at the detail here. It's even got the picture that Boo drew for Sully. Oh yeah. There's a Hallmark booth over here where you can get Disney themed Hallmark ornaments and a few various other things. Is this like a Wookiee koozie? Oh, a Han Solo and Carbonite phone holder. Some very interesting stuff here. I love this land speeder one. They have some really adorable things here. But I think, I think, I like this stuff. A rattle set. We do, I think we need rattles for the baby. But I don't really know because I've never had a baby. So do you like, does everybody get rattles? Look at this thing. Oh, this, yeah, like a towel with a rattle on it. That's a thing, right? Whoa, look at that Mickey Mouse. What is it? I think it's a bag. It's a backpack. I like this Mickey and Minnie. They look like they're knit. But also look, they're in a teacup here. Oh, it's available in October for $18.99. So this isn't even available yet. Sneak peek, breaking. The Disney Studios panel is just letting out, well, just finishing letting out, where they talked about the new movie Onward, talked about the new Star Wars movie, and they talked about Frozen 2. There's a stance booth here. If you guys are not familiar with stance, they make socks. These are all Disney style socks. There's actually a stance store in Disney Springs. Look at these. They got little tassels on the back. Yes, perfect. Look at this gigantic, incredible Hulk wearing Mickey ears. Sometimes I'm confused by what the name of the booth is. I believe that this one's called Hero Within. It's like a uh, special outfits that are sort of normal looking, but at the same time, geeky themed. It sort of looks like Star-Lord's jacket, but then on the inside it says Guardians of the Galaxy real big. And this one's the Black Panther one, and it's got the Black Panther logo on the inside. These are pretty nice. This one's pretty awesome. It's Carol Danvers, and it's like a bomber jacket. And then the inside looks like Captain Marvel. We got a display here for Villainous, the board game, and then a Ravensburg puzzle, which is 40,320 pieces. Ooh, that's a big puzzle. Or you could have this one. By the way, Ravensburg is my favorite puzzle brand. They have been the hardest ones that I've ever done, but I do like them. We got a Dark Horse Comics booth over here where they're selling different Disney comic books. Like here's Snow White, and then they also have some books. Like here's Dumbo, Friends in High Places. Toy Story, The Adventurers, Volume Two, The Lion King. And the last in this row is a company called Iron Studios. And they sell super realistic figurines. They're not posable or anything. It's just them in a battle, it looks like. This is everybody from Endgame. 
They have a little display here for characters from Into the Spider-Verse. Spider Pig over there. That was a walk down one side of the far end of the expo hall. And then Mickey's of Glendale we went into earlier. They also have a pin store that we weren't able to go into because it's a nine hour line. Now we're headed back in this direction. So yesterday we visited this Imagining Tomorrow Today, which is a lot of different things that Disney is doing around the parks. And then we went over all the Epcot stuff yesterday. And they have a display of the new Hong Kong castle. When Hong Kong opened, it was just like in Disneyland. So what they're doing is they're just building around the original castle there and making it into Storybook Castle, which is kind of a conglomeration of all of the different castles around the world. Right next to Imagineering Tomorrow Today is an entire display about the Avengers campuses that are gonna be coming to various Disney parks around the world. So there's a map here that's kind of going over the different places where Avengers will be. You got DCA, you got Florida for uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, the Zandarian outpost. They got another Avengers campus at Paris. Then you got Hong Kong, and then there's going to be a ride in Shanghai. And then they've got the mobile base, which represents Disney Cruise Line. This is Vailu, and they are from the queue line for Guardians of the Galaxy. And these are fully autonomous, and they interact with sound and movement. So I feel like if I go at him real quick, he'll jump back because he gets a little bit scared. But he's having fun with me. He's like wagging his little tail and everything. He's really fixated on me. He likes me. I think he, oh no, he got distracted. Talking about Spider-Man over here. And there's a character called the Webbot, which is part of both Shanghai and California Adventure. They have a model of what the Avengers campus will look like in Paris. And then over here, is what California will look like. And you can actually see Guardians of the Galaxy over there. They have a gigantic pretzel and soda here because the food area will be based off of Ant-Man. Blue pin particles plus existing food equals feed more people and have giant snacks. Win-win, signed Scott. And there's some things that they've shrunk down And then also over in Hong Kong, they're switching over their Buzz Lightyear ride to an Avengers themed ride. So you can see these are the blasters from it. Got some pin particles over there. Got some of Iron Man's core reactors. And we have some Stark Industry jackets. And then right next to that Avengers area is a whole Pixar animation booth. I love a good Princess and the Frog cosplay. Fantastic. Thank you guys so much. There's kind of a lot to the Pixar booth. So there's a little stage over here. And then we showed you guys some of the onward stuff earlier. And then there's a photo op with the balls. And they were giving away these little Pixar balls, the Luxo balls, all weekend. We interrupt this tour for a moment to watch the parade again. So they have a parade each day. And I don't know if it's gonna be any different than it was yesterday, but we'll find out. So far, we're very similar to what it was yesterday. Mickey got real excited for a second there. Quick question. Is this the dance from High School Musical? Now we're gonna head back into this exhibit that we missed all of yesterday. This is the heroes and villains, the art of the Disney costume. This is Jafar's outfit from the new live action Aladdin. Who they have Barbosa's outfit. Barbosa has fantastic hair. You guys know what he would store in that tube back there? The Declaration of Independence because this was worn by Nick Cage in National Treasure. They have three different versions of Mary Poppins' outfits. So the one in red on the left is from the Broadway musical. And then the one in the middle was worn by Julie Andrews, and there's her carpet bag. And then the one on the right was worn by Emily Blunt in the most recent Mary Poppins Returns. 
I like how the umbrellas are just slightly different. So I guess the Golden Girls is on Freeform now? So they have all this Golden Girls merch on display? They have a lot of Golden Girls stuff on display. Oh wait, this is not Golden Girls. This is all kinds of different stuff. Oh, there's the beeper from Captain Marvel. That's really interesting. This is more Golden Girl stuff. Some Golden Girls Chia Pets. Wow. How fun is that? Ooh, look, it's Sharpay Evans S2000 Honda from High School Musical, maybe? I don't really know, but I think I do. I think it's from High School Musical. There's a Haunted Mansion design challenge, and all throughout the year, people submitted artwork, and the winners got to come to D23 for free and display their artwork. Some of these are truly amazing. Whoa. Some of these are absolutely frightening. Wow. This one's called the 999th Supper. Brilliant. Is this woven or is this cross-stitch? I guess that would be cross-stitch. I can't tell, but it's amazing. Oh. This one was done by Jeff Delgado. Jeff Delgado did some of our t-shirts too. How fun is that? They have a couple of retired ride vehicles here. A Francis's Ladybug Boogie, which was almost like the teacups, a flat ride style ride. And then Heimlich's Choo Choo Train over here. I wonder if this is the same one from Pixar. I don't think it is because the one from Pixar has been fully restored. And this one looks like it has a few little dents and dings still. They have some artwork here. This is an original silkscreen ride poster from Peter Pan. And they say the other dark rides in Fantasyland. If you guys are interested, only a nice cool $12,000. This whole section of the expo feels kind of like a flea market, but like specifically pointed towards Disney stuff. Some Rescue Rangers collectible action figures. Some DuckTales action figures. Tailspin action figures. As the day progresses, the crowds are dying down a little bit. So it's almost 6.30 now, and the actual event closes at seven. So the crowds are dying down kind of a lot at this point. Sticking around for the cosplays at the end of the day. Look at this Porg. Wow, the Porg's gotta do a force push too. There is something that I wanted from this Disney store, but the line looks to still be at least an hour or two. So I think we're gonna call it a night from day two of D23 Expo. I think we're gonna be back tomorrow for Disney Parks panel in the morning. Good morning from day three of D23. Today, we've got the big panel, Parks and Resorts, where they're hopefully going to announce a lot of new stuff coming to all the Walt Disney World parks and maybe some Disneyland parks and maybe around the world parks. But we're excited to hear what they're bringing to Walt Disney World. We know that they're gonna announce some stuff for Epcot, because there was these coming soon posters around the pavilion that was showing off Epcot, the changes coming to Epcot. And then who knows what else they're gonna announce. Maybe an opening day for Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway? That would be exciting. They just started letting people in. It's a mad rush in. We've got our seat for the Disney Parks panel presentation. And this is the media reserve seat. So here's my view of the stage right here. I hope you've been enjoying this D23 Expo, which has been filled with exciting announcements about all the new stories coming your way, starting right here at Disneyland. So as you may know, we recently brought the Main Street Electrical Parade back for a limited time. And so I thought it would just only be appropriate to start our announcements by telling you about an all new parade. It's called Magic Happens. It features stunning floats from Moana, Coco, Sleeping Beauty, and more, all led by Mickey Mouse and the Gang. It's a perfect mix of classic and new stories for every generation. This new parade comes alive with an energetic musical score and a brand new song produced in partnership with singer-songwriter Todrick Hall. It's coming to Disneyland this spring. Expo, we announced that the first ever 
Mickey Mouse right through attraction was coming to Walt Disney World. And as you all know, we're building another one right here at Disneyland. Now, we've said that this attraction will be coming to Disneyland's Toontown, and today I'm thrilled to share our first look at what the exterior of that will look like in this amazing addition to the special part of the park. Now the action takes place at the El Capitoon Theater <laughs> in Disneyland, where Mickey and Minnie are premiering their newest short, Perfect Picnic. And before guests enter the cinema, they'll experience a special exhibit created by the Toontown Hysterical Society, <laughs> featuring costumes and props from the Toon world. And then the adventure begins. This is a new look at the inside of the attraction at Walt Disney World, and as you can see, our Imagineers are hard at work. Now, I was just in Orlando a couple weeks ago, and I gotta tell you, this attraction is gonna be so much fun with a stunning surprise twist that I definitely will not spoil here. But what we will show you is a first look at the updated Chinese theater that will be home to this fun-filled adventure. Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway will open up Disney's Hollywood Studios next year and at Disneyland in 2022. Soon, an all-new show will premiere at the theater at Disney Springs. It will be a live performance unlike any other. That's because for the very first time, Walt Disney Imagineering, Walt Disney Animation Studios have joined forces with Cirque du Soleil. And we could not be more excited. Now, speaking of collaborations, I want to talk about one more that will bring Disney magic even closer to all of your homes. You know, whether it's an action figure, t-shirt, or plush, our products are actually a big part of the Disney experience. The exact kind of products that are available at our Disney stores. But we also know that not everybody has a Disney store in their backyard. So we found a way to bring that magic closer to you. And to tell you more, I'd like to welcome the CEO of Target, Brian Cornell. At Target, our team has one purpose, and that's helping families discover a little bit of joy in everyday life. And I can't imagine a better brand to do that with than Disney. Helping share that Disney magic with millions and millions of families who visit Target each week. And we're doing it in a whole new way. In October, we'll open up Disney store shopping shops inside 25 Target stores around the country and 40 more Target stores by October of next year. In these special locations, you'll find fun, Instagrammable moments and interactive content, and of course, an assortment of high quality Disney store products all in one place. We're also building a new Disney experience on Target.com and our mobile channels, where guests can find Disney store products and have it delivered to their home or pick it up at one of our stores. And finally, we're excited <laughs> to be bringing Target to Disney with a new Target opening right near Walt Disney World Resort. But now on to the experiences that will put you at the center of the action like never before. We're creating immersive superhero lands at Disneyland Paris and Disney California Adventure that will be unlike any other. Now they're actual campuses set up by the Avengers to recruit the next generation of superheroes. So these campuses are gonna be linked together in a global story. Starting with the first ever Spider-Man themed attraction at a Disney park. Through a combination of classic effects and innovative technologies, guests will be able to sling webs just like Spider-Man in an interactive, totally cool, but family friendly adventure. But once you've worked up the appetite from all that web slinging, you can head over to the PIM Test Kitchen. In this kitchen, PIM Technologies is using them to grow and shrink food. It's gonna be a lot of fun. And for the first time ever, these campuses will give you a chance to meet Ant-Man and the Wasp. <laughs> Along with many of your favorite superheroes. Peter Parker is one of the many aspiring inventors at Webb. And you'll get to experience some of the cool new tech that he and his friends are working on. We will be welcomed to an open house where the kids are excited to invite us for a test drive of their latest invention. The Web Slinger Vehicle which allows anyone to sling webs, just like Peter's buddy, Spider-Man. And of course, Spider-Man will be there himself to show us how it's done. 
Peter has also been working on these adorable little spider bots. Unfortunately, they are not ready for prime time at all. Smack in the middle of the open house excitement, the spider bots start glitching, replicating themselves over and over again, and escape out into the campus. Now Peter needs our help. Our test drive of the web slinger vehicle instead turns into a real mission where we must work alongside Spider-Man to web up all these bots. A lot of excitement ensues, I guarantee it. The Avengers Campus will be home not only to the Spider-Man experience and Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout, but a brand new e-ticket attraction. But opening as part of the second phase of development will be an all-new adventure that put guests, or should I say, all of you recruits, into a test to thrilling experience alongside the Avengers. And for the very first time, we all get to step aboard a Quinjet and fly to Wakanda. But when you're around the Avengers, nothing really goes according to plan. Alongside the Avengers in an epic battle to save our world against one of the most powerful villains they have ever faced. Our Imagineers are hard at work conceiving an all new innovative ride system to put you in the middle of the action. And as Nick Fury said, you become a part of a bigger universe. You just don't know it yet. This new attraction will be part of phase two, but phase one will open in Anaheim next year. From the beginning, Epcot has pushed the limits of possibility. It began as a place that would always be in the state of becoming. Now, on a fresh new journey, dedicated to inspiring The magic of possibility. This is what Epcot will become. More Disney, more timeless, and more relevant to the millions of guests that visit us each year. Where Future World currently stands, three new neighborhoods will spring up, each celebrating a unique aspect of what makes Epcot special. World nature, world discovery, and world celebration. It's in World Celebration where some of our biggest changes will occur. And that all starts when you first enter the gates. We've returned iconic elements like an updated version of Epcot's original fountain while adding greenery to beautify the entryway. And as always, Spaceship Earth will remain the park's grand icon. And so we couldn't even think about an Epcot of the future without putting a little bit of new magic into this Epcot original. The new Spaceship Earth will still feature great moments of human history. But instead of inventions and technology, we'll focus on something that binds all of humanity together, storytelling. Many of the scenes you know and love will remain, but we'll bring them to life in amazing new ways. We're also adding new scenes to reflect the universal nature of the human experience. And in addition to the fresh narration, you'll have a new guide. In each moment of your journey, you'll follow a magical light that we call our story light which will play a central role in the experience. The story light will come to life in dynamic ways, giving each scene energy and stunning beauty while creating a narrative that ties your journey together. Now, as you leave Spaceship Earth, you'll look out at a completely transformed Epcot with sweeping views as far as World Showcase. And we call this Dreamer's Point. And we thought there would be no better place to feature a new statue of our founder, Walt Disney. You all know that Epcot was Walt's dream, and we imagine him along with us looking out from this very spot. Now, continuing your journey through world celebration, you'll explore gardens that'll pique your curiosity and give you opportunities to engage with your surroundings. A wishing tree that comes to life in surprising ways. A story fountain that celebrates the power and music of iconic Disney storytelling. And a pavilion that's the perfect place for live events which have become the home base for Epcot's signature festivals. It features a plaza level, a mid-expo level, and a park that sits in the sky with a perfect vantage point for all of our new nighttime spectaculars. Now let's visit World Discovery, where stories about science, technology, and now in a galactic adventure come to life. And as you know, we're developing a Guardians of the Galaxy themed attraction. The adventure starts in the Galaxarium, a planetarium-like presentation that will take you from Earth to the planet Xandar and back. 
Then you will all be invited to board a Nova ship to see our world from space. But of course, when the Guardians of the Galaxy show up, you can be sure that adventure will soon follow. Now we've already announced this attraction will feature an invention, right? But what we didn't tell you is that coaster will also feature our first ever reverse launch into space. And I'm happy to announce that the name of this blockbuster attraction will be Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. Let's talk about another offering coming to World Discovery. We're expanding Mission Space Pavilion to include a new restaurant that's going to be out of this world. Guests will board a unique elevator for a journey to connect to a space station. And once you arrive, you'll dine while taking in the views from the station, including Earth, as seen from day and night from 220 miles high above Epcot. And that height is the inspiration behind the name of this one-of-a-kind restaurant, which is called Space. 220. Departures are scheduled starting this winter. Now we previously announced that the pavilion that once housed the wonders of life would be transformed into a place celebrating the power of play. In this digital metropolis called Play Pavilion, you'll discover an interactive city bursting with experience, games, and activities that connect you with your friends, family, and some of your favorite characters. You can use your creative skills to help the legendary fashion icon Edna Mode on her quest to rid the world of uninspired style and make a splash competing in an epic water balloon fight hosted by our favorite Disney ducks, Huey, Dewey, Louie, and Webby. You'll meet and play with Disney friends, both real and virtual, like never before. And this experience will be open in time for Walt Disney World's 50th anniversary. Now let's jump to World Nature, which is dedicated to understanding and preserving that balance of our natural world. And we have two new offerings in this special part of the park. First, the Land Pavilion's new film, Awesome Planet, and Make a Splash, inspired exploration trail that allows guests to meet and play with magical living water. Here water has a life and a mind of its own just like Moana's friend, the ocean. And in keeping with Epcot's tradition as a place where guests can discover the world, you'll learn all about the importance of the natural water cycle. Our last neighborhood is World Showcase, where we're bringing new magic to several of our pavilions, starting with China. Our Imagineers are creating an all-new Circle Vision presentation that will be filmed and shown for the very first time in a completely seamless digital 360 degree digital format, and we're calling it Wondrous China. And speaking of films, I'm excited to announce that Canada, far and wide in Circle Vision 360, will debut in January of 2020. Now our next update is the France Pavilion, which is already a fan favorite. At Destination D, we announced that the Pressions de France will be joined by a new film for the entire family, a Beauty and the Beast sing-along that will have everyone singing to their favorite songs while enjoying the comedic twist to this tale as old as time. This new film debuts in January of 2020. And also coming to the France Pavilion will be Remy with Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. Now this attraction will be situa situated in an entirely new area of the pavilion. And inside, guests will shrink down to the size of Remy and then race through Gusteau's famous restaurant on a wild adventure. And today we can announce that Remy's Ratatouille Adventure will be ready to serve up fun in the summer of 2020. So to help curb your cravings, we're going to bring a classic French favorite. Le Crepere de Paris will start serving in time for summer of 2020 and will offer both table and quick service options. I wanted to share how excited we are for the Disney Skyliner to welcome its first guest in just a few weeks. At Epcot, the Skyliner will deliver guests right to the park's International Gateway entrance. And on this all new system, which will connect four hotels to Disney's Hollywood Studios and to Epcot. Now this opens on September 29th, and it's gonna add a whole new layer of magic to Walt Disney World. And while we're still at Walt World Showcase, I have one more big announcement. You know, Dick, we all love Mary Poppins, uh, 65 years. Did after you just say 65 years? <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing here? <laughs> and I have to say, Dick, that you're at the center of Disney DNA as well. And on behalf of all the fans here, I wanna thank you for bringing joy to generations of our fans and families. Mr. Dodd, if you exist, you're a temperance, why do you have a So 
I'm sure by now you've guessed that we're bringing Mary Poppins to Epcot. The United Kingdom Pavilion will be home to the first ever Mary Poppins attraction in a Disney theme park. Based on the Disney Mary Poppins film, Cherry Tree Lane will soon join the UK Pavilion as an entirely new neighborhood. You'll be able to step down Cherry Tree Lane past Admiral Boom's home and then enter number 17, the home of the Bates family, where your adventure begins. Now we'll share more as this project develops, but we know that you're gonna love stepping into this magical world for the first time. So as we announced at Destination D last year, an all new limited time, nighttime spectacular will debut this October. Epcot Forever will take us on a journey through the past, present, and future through a stirring collection of songs. So in the tower, we are ready for takeoff. Epcot Forever will be a spectacular that you will not want to miss. But it's just the opening act for an even bigger musical celebration. Now we're working on a new nighttime spectacular, celebrating the power of music. And I'm excited to announce that this new show will be called Harmonious. This will be the largest nighttime spectacular in our history. And Harmonious will debut in World Showcase Lagoon in 2020. The biggest celebration Walt Disney World has ever seen. It's 50th anniversary. But in the past, we focused our magical milestone celebrations at the Magic Kingdom Park. But this time, we're bringing the party to each one of our four parks. But today, we're going to announce a revolutionary new digital offering that will change the way that guests plan and experience for a trip to Walt Disney World. It's called Disney Genie. It will put customized itineraries geared towards your interest at your fingertips, cutting down on the need to plan and research. Just tell Disney Genie what you want to experience for the day, and it will quickly evaluate millions of options to present you with an optimal plan. And best of all, it's all flexible. If you change your wish for any reason during the day, Disney Genie will help re-optimize your day. It will even send you real-time tips and updates, including recommendations for experiences that it thinks you'll love. And for those who don't want to worry about making dining and fast pass reservations in multiple steps, Genie will take care of it for you. Now, we're planning to debut Disney Genie at Walt Disney World Resort in late 2020, and we cannot wait. Now, with all this new fun coming to Walt Disney World, we're also creating equally magic hotels and lodging. Reflections, a Disney Lakeside Lodge, would bring a whole new way to stay at Walt Disney World. And today, we're ready to share more details. This resort hotel and proposed Disney Vacation Club Resort will be a classic country lodge reimagined. You'll find special accommodations like A-frame houses and treehouse suites with all the fixtures, furnishings, and artwork inspired by Disney nature-based storage. And along the bayous of Bay Lake, you'll find a perfect setting for a table service restaurant inspired by none other than Princess and the Frog. So this will be one of the most unique resorts we've ever built and we'll have more to share soon. You're about to learn more about what will perhaps be the most immersive experience we've ever imagined. I don't know, maybe some of you visited our pavilion on the show floor and may have seen a model of a ship that's gonna take you on a two-night Star Wars experience like none other on Star Wars. Galactic Star Cruiser, which will immerse you and your fellow travelers in that galaxy far, far away. Your vessel is the Halcyon, a glamorous starliner. And once on board, you'll cruise to the galaxy for two days and two nights while becoming the hero of your very own Star Wars adventure. And as with any cruise, your fellow guests will board and depart together. But unlike most cruises, every experience from dining to unique activities are part of an immersive Star Wars story. And everything, from an alien crew to the fact that absolutely every window has a view out into space. This of course includes the one in your well-appointed cabin. We hope you'll enjoy the ever-changing vistas as the ship progresses from place to place. This immersive experience includes your activities, onboard dining experiences, and most importantly, it is an opportunity to live your multi-day story as it unfolds and interweaves with the crew, other passengers, and those Star Wars characters. 
and it all connects to your planet excursion or port day to Black Spire Outpost on Batu. It also includes some thrilling activities on board the ship. Both kids and grown-ups alike will get to face off against a training remote while wielding a lightsaber. This is like what we saw Luke Skywalker do as he was just learning to use the Force. You'll also be invited to visit some of the working portions of the ship, like the bridge. You'll get to learn a bit about the ship's systems, like navigation and defense. You'll even get to try your hand at operating them. And perhaps you'll even discover some hidden spaces deep in the mechanics of the ship, where secret allegiance members may hold meetings, or where you may just be called upon to become a hero. We're looking forward to beginning booking soon. Thank you, and may the force be with you. And we're so excited that Disney Cruise Line was recently voted the world's best cruise line in its category by elite readers of travel and leisure. In fact, there's no better way to be fully immersed in Disney than by taking a voyage with us. We also create some magic off our ships with experiences that are port of call, including our very own Castaway Key. And it was voted top cruise line private island four years in a row by Cruise Critic. So we scoured the Bahamas and the Caribbean for an ideal location. And today, I'm beyond excited to officially share the location of this new Disney-owned and managed port of call. It's known as Lighthouse Point to those in the Bahamas, and it's found on the breathtaking island of Eleuthero. We're only able to bring this experience to you thanks to the extraordinary people of the Bahamas, and in particular, the people of Eleuthero. And the end result will be a place not like any other. Not a replica of some old Bahamian town, not a pirate fantasy, but a dreamlike landscape of adventure by the sea, where art and nature combine with Disney magic to create a destination that can only exist in one place, here at Lighthouse Point. Each ship is unique, with names that embody the experience of sailing with Disney and the power of our stories. And today, I am so excited to share the name of our fifth ship. I mean, the Disney Wish, what a fitting name. And that's because making wishes come true is part of the Disney DNA, and it's at the heart of so many of our stories, including the three-story atrium that will be inspired by the beauty of an enchanted fairy tale. We've already shared that the Disney Wish will be delivered to us in 2021, and I'm thrilled to announce this incredible new ship will begin to set sail in January of 2022. You know, stern characters have always been a tradition on the Disney cruise ship since the beginning. And so for the Disney Wish, we want to feature a character whose story is all about, well, you guessed it, wishing. And so you'll find Rapunzel. Now the Disney Wish is appropriately named for another reason. Because as you know, wish granting is a core part of who we are at Disney. And since 1980, Disney has helped make a wish grant more than 130,000 wishes. We were part of the very first wish ever granted and helped grant more than 9,000 wishes every single year. Thank you for joining us and never stop wishing. So in the Imagineering booth, we had some posters that were covered up the last few days that they're now uncovered after that panel. We got one here for World Celebration and one for the Mary Poppins attraction coming to the UK Pavilion at Epcot. We also heard the name of the space restaurant, which will be Space 220. So we have some new symbols here that are part of Epcot now, and we kind of talked to the Imagineer to figure out what they are. So this one will be the new space restaurant. This is the new Guardians of the Galaxy ride. This is the Play Pavilion, World of Motion, which is uh, like test track. We've got World Showcase, the Land Pavilion, the new Moana Experience, the Seas. This is the Odyssey Building, which will be the home to the Blue Sky Cellar type preview center. This is Spaceship Earth. And then this one will be the new pavilion area that's unnamed. That one is Journey into Imagination. And then we're back over to where we were on the other side. Kind of a lot of different things to try to remember. New symbols, some old ones, and some new ones. Holy cow, there were so many announcements at that panel. Mind-blowing. 
We got the name of a new cruise ship, the Disney Wish. We got to hear about the new island that Disney bought and they're building up. Got to hear about a ton, a ton of Epcot stuff that I'm extremely excited for. Got to hear about the new Star Wars hotel. Didn't get to hear any prices. Some people were kind of batting around prices on Twitter yesterday, but I didn't hear an official announcement of a price. But as soon as we hear that, we'll let you guys know what we know. Reflections, Lakeside Lodge, we got to see some of the stuff about that. New restaurants coming to there based around Princess and the Frog, which is going to be awesome. So I'm assuming it's going to be New Orleans themed with New Orleans themed food, which is delicious. It's just like there was so much stuff and it just got me so excited for everything that is Disney within the next few years. And you guys know that we're going to be there every step of the way experiencing all this stuff with you guys. So it's going to be an exciting time. Right now, I think we're gonna head back to the hotel room for a second just to kind of get a new battery and uh, drop some stuff off. We're gonna head over to DCA and have some theme park fun and get some food. So with that being said, we are off. And we'll see you guys tomorrow. This is Jenny Bell Neverlands from the D23 Expo. And now it's time to pay the price.